So, this was Zombie Island. Somehow I'd been expecting something more sinister. Come on, Rio. Let's find that treasure. No, thanks. I'm staying right here. Oh, come on. You said yourself there's no zombies left. Yeah, but that was while there was a big pile of seawater between me and this place. All me have now is this little bit between the boat and the shore, and I'm hanging on to it. This does not look like the most accessible of places. It was Rio waiting patiently in his fishing boat. But then again, a free ride is a free ride. That Emily sure asks a lot of questions. Resit man, this whole Emily business just isn't funny. Look, we're obviously at cross purposes here. I'm talking about Emily Ketch. Yeah, and so am I. She was my friend. Her aunts hated it, but we did move together, you know. She used to be real keen at hide and seek. It could take hours to find her. One time, the last time, it took years. She must have shouted and screamed herself hoarse, but there was nobody to hear her. Where'd she hidden herself? Captain Ketch's old sea chest. The only way to open it was from the outside. Suddenly, I didn't feel so good. We never exchanged another word about Emily Ketch. Rio's boat was strewn with fishing nets and tackle. I was quite happy where I was, relatively speaking. The warm Caribbean. The sea looked inviting, but I was here to do a job. The cliff stopped me getting off the beach. The cliff was steep, too steep to climb without handholds. And I couldn't find any. The outcrop was about the only feature on the cliff face. It was too high. I couldn't get up there. Could I borrow your net? Yeah, man, no problem. You planning on catching some fish? Nope. I'm after a big rock. Well, here I go. Wish me luck, Rio. Good luck, George. Watch out for the walking dead. I stumbled down dark stairwells for what seemed like forever, until, suddenly, I found myself... Wow! In an abandoned London underground station. This place must have been closed down decades ago. There are several abandoned underground stations dotted around London. It was the stairs leading back up to the museum. There was no point in going back up there. I'm not sure how accessible they are, to be honest. It was an old chocolate vending machine. The machine needed to be fed a coin before it would operate. One D only was embossed below the coin slot. Something protruded slightly from the slot. The slot was much too thin for my fingers. I pushed the hair clip into the slot and whatever was stuck there disappeared into the machine. There was a copper coin in the cup. I pulled out an old English penny. 
It was an old English penny coin. On one side was Britannia, managing to look both virginal and matronly. On the other was the head of King George VI, looking much the same. An ancient bar of chocolate dropped into the tray at the bottom of the machine. And as a special bonus, the penny dropped through to the reject pocket. The slot was much too thin for my fingers. I pulled out an old English penny. A flap covered the tray into which the machine dispensed chocolate bars. I took the ancient bar of chocolate. The tray was empty. It was a poster advertising holidays in Scotland. Ooh, whereabouts? It might have been a nice souvenir if it hadn't been torn and dirty. It was an old ticket machine. A sign read, Tickets 3D. The machine looked like it had sold its last ticket a long time ago. A pile of old railway sleepers was blocking the platform. I'd probably break my neck if I climbed over the sleepers, or worse, a heel. That looks like our old friend's car. The ghost didn't seem threatening in any way. Well, Khan dressed as the elderly Scottish lady, at least. The ghost obviously didn't want to talk. Perhaps it was shy. I wonder if it wants some chocolate. The ghost obviously didn't want to talk. No? Okay. Well, offering the, the bar of chocolate to the ghost opens up a new pathway. Who the hell are you? Joey, is that you? Oh, I remember you now. Hey, listen, don't go near that hole. Nobody tells Robert Foster what to do, lady. You don't understand. I've played this game before. There's something horrible in that hole. Some beast with tentacles. You're nuts. They don't make animations like that anymore. L B S Lubs What are Lubs? Pounds Classic British pounds The machine wasn't about to weigh me for nothing The poster was advertising a play I'd never heard of The date on the poster was before I was born It was an old map of the London Underground. It looked just like the modern one. It was a maintenance cupboard. A latch lock stopped me getting into the cupboard. It was the tunnel the train had come out of. It was too dangerous to start walking along the tracks. I remembered what always happened to Wiley Coyote when he did that. The train signal light still worked. A warning sign saying high voltage convinced me to leave the lights alone. We need to turn these lights to red. 
in order to escape from this platform. And the only option we have is this box just here. But we have no key, so let's try this dagger. The blade of the dagger just fitted between the door and the soft wood frame. The door gave slightly and then held firm. A small crack had appeared where the dagger had pried the door from its frame. Through the crack, I could just make out the latch which stopped the door from opening. So we have an, an old school latch. Surely this dagger would do the trick. It did fit down the crack just here. The blade of the dagger was too thick to get into the narrow crack. Okay. I wonder if this still works? Because these old weight machines used to give out a reading with a piece of card. I put the old penny into the slot. The needle twitched rustily and the machine spat out a card. The weight was in Imperial units. It meant nothing to me. The card also had my fortune on it. A family quarrel will turn out to your advantage. 13 stone. Nico is 3 stone lighter than me. Uh, no. What do you mean, no? I remembered my student days when I regularly forgot my house keys. A wiggle with the thick card between the frame and the lock and the latch lifted. I'm confused by that one. Was the crack and the door two separate entities and I just misclicked? It was a big red ever so tempting button. The train was my ride out of there. I could worry about not having a ticket when I got to the docks. What we have now is another maze. Well, it's not so much a maze as it's only two or three screens long, but it's full of predetermined pathways. And those pathways can easily make you end up walking around in circles. I am going to take the shortest route possible. A clump of reeds grew out of the stinking swamp. It was a short, hollow reed. One reed was enough. There was something in that hole beneath the rock. As soon as I stooped to investigate the hole, its inhabitant disappeared into the darkness. We have this reed, and, and it looks like it could be used as some sort of blowpipe.
The end of the reed was too narrow for the dart to fit into. So we stick this reed into this hole just here. The end of the reed had been neatly bitten off. Now I knew what was living in there. A long-toothed, snarling, furry, wild thing. The dart fitted snugly into the reed. Great. I was tooled up and dangerous. There we go. Right. Now let's head Just trying to find my bearings right now. No, sorry, it's this way. I slightly confused myself as in my notes I forgot to start off from here. It was a stout overhanging branch. If I jumped, I could just about reach the branch. The path was blocked by an ugly and extremely dangerous looking boar. It looks tiny, but I would not like to mess with it. The boar's expression said, Forget it, Stobart. No? Okay, let's then try to drug it from a distance. There definitely was inhabitants here at some point, as there seems to be quite a lot of man-made objects dotted around this island. It was a needle of rock in the middle of the clearing. It didn't look like a natural formation. I remembered Ketch's log, for is it not writ that tis easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle. Seemed pretty relevant now. No good. 
I'd have to be bitten by a radioactive spider before I stood any chance of getting up there. The rock was partially overgrown by creepers. The creeper just came away from the rock as I pulled it. The creeper didn't look like it would hold my weight. Okay, so what we need to do here, and in the interest of saving a bit of time by backtracking, we need to get this marker on the top of this rock just here. The marker wasn't going to stay attached to anything as thick as the creeper. So we need to attach it to this net just here. The marker clipped firmly onto the net. This net that belongs to Rio, that I hope we give back to him at some point. Great. I'd created some sort of creeper marker fishing net assembly. Sometimes I terrify myself with my creative genius. I'd successfully got the marker into a position near the top of the needle simply by using the kind of lateral thinking that can get you institutionalized. That high up, the marker should be visible for miles. I wasn't going to pull it down now I'd got it up there. And here we are back in the maze. So, I believe we start by going this way. I had written notes about the directions for both mazes, but I forgot to write down notes of what to do in between. That's what confused me about getting to the area, area with the boar. Here we have three directions that we can go in, but the middle one is slightly obscured. Hold on. I've been here before. Haven't I? You have. I believe that is a trick to try and throw you off the scent. Is that the correct term? Well, I say scent. I mean, I was going to say throw you in the wrong direction in some respects but the maze doesn't actually give you any hints of which route to take because as you can see two or three times we were back in the same location but having to go down a different route yeah that drove me crazy when I was younger thankfully we have guides these days and that are easily accessible Anyway, three shallow holes had been made in the rock. Joining the dots would make an equilateral triangle. 
Initials had been carved into the rock. Initials carved into the stone read F.K. Frederick Ketch had been here. While we are up here, it would be rude not to have a look around. Now these three circles or indents in the shape of a triangle perfectly fits this Fyodolite. Did they have Fyodolites in the 16th century? Fyodolite is not an easy word for me to say. Hopefully this is the last time that I use it. It was Bronson's theodolite, now being put to a nobler use than petty larceny. The hill I was on had reminded me of a camel's hump as I'd climbed up it. Now I had to see what I could see. We need to find that marker. I don't think we can go this way. Aha, here we are. It was the marker which I had raised up the needle of rock. It was the marker which I had raised up the needle of rock. Oh, fair enough. I could see the marker I had fastened on the rock down in the forest, and right in line with it, that had to be where Ketch had hidden his treasure. I guess that we are going to leave this here. There is a hot spot around here somewhere. There. Okay. This view seems to have disappeared now. Onwards. <laughs> 